Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 4 of the chapter Electrochemistry. In this video, I am going to solve three in-text questions that follow the topic the electrode potential, that is the measurement of the electrode potential. These in-text questions are question 3.1 which reads, how would you determine the standard electrode potential of the system Mg2 positive Mg? So, this is the oxidized and the reduced form for magnesium. In order to find out the standard electrode potential, you cannot find out the standard electrode potential of a single electrode. You always have to form a cell, a galvanic cell, and then the EMF of the cell gives you the electrode potential if you know the electrode potential of the other electrode. And as I told you in the previous video, that we take hydrogen electrode as convention to have a value of zero and we use it as the reference electrode. So in this case, we are going to take hydrogen as the reference electrode and make a cell out of the hydrogen electrode and the magnesium electrode that has been given to us. Now, uh, normally what would happen, you would make the hydrogen electrode to be the anode and whatever other element is given to you, you make it the cathode. That is, you are just assuming it. What you are doing in reality in the laboratory is that in the hydrogen electrode you have that platinum wire which is covered with the platinum black and you are bubbling hydrogen through it through a molar solution of an acid and that forms one electrode and in the other beaker you take a salt solution of that metal and you dip the metallic rod into it and you connect it through an external circuit that is a wire and an ammeter to record your reading and on the inner side you have a salt bridge. So having made that system, automatically whichever electrode has a higher reduction potential, that is which has a positive value of reduction potential, it means that substance is getting reduced. Therefore that automatically forms the, uh, the cathode. And the one that is that has a negative value is getting, uh, is getting oxidized and that automatically forms the anode. But we don't know this because we've just taken a metal and we have the hydrogen electrode and we just want to see what is the electrode potential for that one. So assuming that we are not aware, how do we represent the cell? We take hydrogen electrode to be the anode. So what is hydrogen electrode represented as? Platinum, Pt, solid. And it has hydrogen, H2, gas. And at one bar with H positive aqueous one molar and you make the salt bridge and you have Mg two positive one molar by Mg solid. So this is the representation of the cell that you would you're just representing it not knowing or just assuming that the hydrogen electrode is forming the anode and the magnesium electrode is forming the cathode. And then you find out the potential difference. You just record the ammeter reading. These are behaving as they should in actuality. In reality, they are going to behave as this is going to behave as anode and this is going to behave as cathode. Why? Because if you look at the table of the electrode potentials, the magnesium electrode, it actually has a potential of uh, minus 2.36. Minus 2.36 while hydrogen has a value of zero. So whichever is positive, whichever is negative is the one that is getting reduced and whichever is, for, uh, sorry, whichever is negative is the one which is, has a negative reduction potential. Therefore, it is getting oxidized and which is positive in comparison to this is getting reduced. So when you look at that now, assuming that you've carried out the experiment and you found out this value, you will learn that this is forming the anode. So how would you represent that cell? Now, although this is not asked, I'm just telling you what is actually going to happen. So you would represent this then as magnesium solid is getting oxidized to Mg2 positive and one in a one molar solution. And then there's a salt bridge, you're going in the reverse direction. H positive, which was aqueous and one molar solution of an acid with hydrogen H2 gas at one bar 
is in the reduced form and platinum solid is the surface on which this electrode is. Anyway, having handled which is the cathode and which is the anode just theoretically, let us see if whatever was the, uh, whatever our cell behaved as, how do we calculate the EMF of the cell? The EMF of the cell, that is E0 cell, now we are finding out the standard electrode potential. Why standard? Because hydrogen is under standard conditions and magnesium is a molar solution, therefore this is also under standard conditions. So electrode potential that you would get would be the standard electrode potential. So E0 cell is equal to E0 right minus E0 left. And E0 right is according to this now is hydrogen therefore this would be zero we know E0 right is the hydrogen electrode and the left electrode is magnesium therefore this would be minus of minus 2.36 now this is a reading that I have seen in the table while you are carrying out this experiment you will see this as the ammeter reading the potential difference right so when you calculate this this will come out to be equal to plus 2.36 that is the EMF of the cell. But we know that E0 right, that is the EMF of the, uh, the electrode potential of the left electrode would be the negative value of this. Therefore, E0L would be equal to minus of the, uh, minus E0L um, would be the E0 cell. Therefore, the value of E0L would be minus 2.36. Although it's not really necessary when you're solving this question, it's not necessary for you to know this. I'm just telling you experimentally, when you do it, you would know the value of the potential. This would be your ammeter reading. But otherwise, you just need to theoretically tell that 0 minus E0L and minus E0L would be the EMF of the cell. And therefore, the negative of that value would give you the electrode potential for the magnesium electrode. Let us come to the next question, that is question 3.2. Now this question reads, can you store copper sulfate solution in a zinc pot? Now if you see the electrode potentials of copper and zinc, when we did the Daniel cell, we said, we saw that the copper uh, has, the electrode potential for copper is uh, plus 0.34 volts. And for zinc is minus 0.76. Uh, is minus 0.76 volts. So zinc is minus 0.76 volts and copper is plus 0.34 volts. What are these? These are the reduction potentials. The more positive the value is, the more is the reduced form of that substance is stable because it is the reduction potential. The higher the reduction potential, the greater the tendency for that substance to remain in the reduced form and therefore act as an oxidizing agent, right? Something that itself gets reduced acts as an oxidizing agent. So anything that is positive will stay in the reduced form and will act as the oxidizing agent. Now, if we have a solution of copper sulfate solutes, of copper sulfate and we dip a zinc rod or we have a container of zinc and we, uh, we uh, store copper sulfate solution in it, now, Zinc has a lower electrode potential or zinc has a lower reduction potential. Therefore, zinc has a tendency to get oxidized while copper in comparison to zinc has a tendency to get stay reduced. So what will happen? We instead have copper in copper sulfate. We have copper in the oxidized form which would prefer to stay reduced. Therefore, what will happen? It would oxidize zinc. Zinc would lose its electron and that electron would go to the two electrons and they would go to copper and thereby reduce copper because it has a stronger tendency to stay reduced. And zinc on the other hand will enter the solution. So what will happen if you store copper sulfate solution in a zinc container? After some time the zinc container will get thinner or it may develop holes in it because it, it starts dissolving and entering the solution. So what is the reaction that would take place? You have zinc plus Cu2 positive, SO4 2 negative and yes Tommy and this would give you zinc sulfate Zn2 positive, SO4 2 negative and, and the copper would get 
reduced and its reduced form would be more stable. So can you store copper sulfate solution in the zinc pot? No, you cannot because you would be melting the zinc pot. The zinc pot itself would enter the solution. So our student here, Stormy, is, <laughs> is really meowing and is not interested in the topic today. Uh, I'll move to the next question. Yes, Tommy. Yes, Tommy. Let us have a student here. He is studying chemistry. Tommy, are you studying chemistry? Say hello. Say hello. No. No. Some days are not. He's not so studious on some days. Anyway. Now, let us come to the next question. Question 3.3. Consult the table of standard electrode potentials and suggest substances that can oxidize the ferrous ions under suitable conditions. What is the reaction that takes place? If ferrous ions get oxidized, that is Fe2 positive gets oxidized, it loses electron, it gives you Fe3 positive plus an electron is released. Now, if we look at the table of the electrode potentials, the reduction potentials, they give us the reduction process. So, in the electrode, in the table for electrode potentials, the reaction that you would see is the reverse of this. That is, the ferric ions, Fe3 positive, gets reduced, that is, gains one electron and gets oxidized to Fe2 positive. Now, the electrode potential for this reaction, that is, the reduction potential for this reaction, is equal to 0 0.77 is 0 0.77 let me just make sure if it's positive or negative it is positive 0 0.77 now any value now what is the aim the aim is what are the substances which are the consult the table of standard electrode potentials and suggest substances that will oxidize it which means Substan which substances would oxidize the ferric ion? The substances that themselves are more stable in being reduced, in their reduced form, or whose potential, reduction potential, is greater than 0 0.77. Anything, you know, it's always a comparison. Anything that has a higher value of reduction potential in comparison to the other substance would get reduced. And the substance which has a lower reduction potential, even if it is a positive value, will get oxidized in comparison to that. So you will consult the table and you will see all those substances that lie above this reaction. And all those which have a value greater than 0 0.77 would reduce, uh, sorry, would uh, oxidize the ferrous ions. Because there, what would reduce anything that has a higher reduction potential would oxidize this reaction. So when you do that, when you look at the table, I'll be inserting a picture of the table here. And when you look at, you may pause the video at this point and look for the answer yourself. And I'll mention a few looking at the table here. You will have uh, fluorine, you'll have CO3 positive, you'll have fluorine, you have cobalt, CO, sorry, cobalt 3 positive, you have permanganate, MnO4 negative, you have chlorine, Cl2, you have oxygen, you have manganese dioxide, you have bromine, I'm writing far more than three. And the nitrate ion, you can mention any three by consulting the table, right? So these were the three in-text questions that I intended to do today. With this, I'll wrap up the video. If you found it helpful, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends, and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.